Our next speaker is Richard Notkins. Uh, he has been a guest to artist in resi residence at the Donk Mill Art Center. We've done print projects together. And he might be wondering why he is here too. He is a ceramicist. But uh, I think we invited these artists mainly because of their total concept and their aesthetic values and their vision of the world. So ladies and gentlemen, I'll let Richard talk to, talk to you about himself. Richard Notkins, thank you for being here. trusted me. <laughs> so I hope I don't let you down. Um, I think in keeping with uh, today's format, uh, from my own ancestral upbringing, um, I'd like to say l'chaim, which means to life. Okay, I'm just going to open this up. Let's see. Here we go. It works. Okay, now, um, oops, you're not supposed to see that. <laughs> um, I, I do want to say that um, I'll be speaking for about five minutes uh, without images, and then I'll be showing a number of images. Uh, so if, if you don't speak English, bear with me. We'll have some images soon, and if someone's sitting next to you that doesn't know what I just said, uh, and you can translate, please do so. Um, Okay, well, I want to thank all of the organizers of IMC 2017 for the opportunity to address this conference, and especially Setsuko and Hiroki Moronoi, who invited me to speak as an artist who's not particularly practiced in the great art of Mokohangra. I'm a sculptor and potter who works primarily in ceramics media, but who is interested in learning more and doing more in the realm of woodblock printing. Um, I've titled my presentation, The Power of Art and Our Precarious Future. What is our role as artists in the world at large? How can we be effective in generating social and political change? Since the beginning of the 21st century, many artists have begun asking these questions in their work, and this expansion of social and political commentary is a rapidly growing direction in the arts as we face existential threats to our human civilization on our only planet. It is time to consider the many roles as artists, writers, musicians, dancers, actors, filmmakers, etc. in our changing world through the power of sheer creativity, occasional social political commentary, various social outreach programs, and myriad other ways. We are more than artists. We are human beings who need to restore sanity to our planet through our daily lives and actions. In today's world, restoring sanity is quite a daunting task, but to preserve the sustainable futures of our children and grandchildren, we cannot afford to turn away from whatever we can contribute to the necessary changes. These changes can occur in our daily lives, from recycling, conserving, and voting for positive change, and in our studios. The impacts of our many works, our collective creativity, can and should ripple outwards across our communities and even our planet, and impact upon the lives of others in positive ways. Works of art whether functional pottery, figurative sculpture, abstract painting, woodblock printing, and or conceptual work in all media have always illuminated the potential of our species' creative, creative spirit with its positive effect on our myriad cultures and civilizations as a whole. Creativity is the polar opposite of destruction, and the collective efforts of all artists acts as a counterbalance to our species' destructive tendencies. 
our dark side. The arts, visual, performing, literary, etc., not only communicate across differing cultures and nationalities, but provide a universal link among the people who inhabit our planet. These links are timeless, and the great art and architecture, poetry and theater of past eras continue to illuminate the highest achievements of humankind. Personally, I am most impacted by art that amazes me, with a strong conceptual base and high level of aesthetic and technical achievement. In short, art that knocks my socks off. I am also most impacted by art that reveals the innermost passions of the artist, works whose visions pass through the artist's heart on their journey from the brain to the artist's hands. After five decades of infusing my art with political narratives, I have come to the following conclusion. For those who choose the overt role of artist as social critic, it is the conceptual and aesthetic strength of the art which is capable of carrying profound messages, as opposed to the corollary. The message alone will not carry the art. Please note, I am not trying to suggest that we all infuse our art with political messages. I am not evangelical in my, evangelical in my philosophy as an artist. I am not trying to be the Billy Graham of social political commentary. I believe that each artist must follow his or her individual passions, wherever that may take them. We should simply work at the highest level of which we are capable and constantly strive for more. One of my favorite quotes from the artist, philosopher, and occasional politician, Andre Malraux, art is a revolt against man's fate. In 1999, as we were about to enter a new millennium, I wrote the following statement. It illustrates the passions which underlie my work as an artist and my philosophy as a human being. As our world has not changed for the better since I first wrote these words, my statement is a little changed. Here is the text. We have stumbled into the 21st century with the advanced technologies of Star Wars and the emotional maturity of cavemen. The problems of human civilization are far too complex to be solved by means of explosive devices. If we can't find more creative solutions to solving worldwide social and political problems than sending young men and women to shred and incinerate one another's flesh with weapons of ever increasing efficiency, we will not survive to celebrate the passage into the 22nd century. And to make a dangerous situation, our country and too many of our fragile planet's nations are now in the hands of ego-driven megalomaniacs, ideological thugs, and fundamentalist tyrants who are fumbling the planet towards World War III. Anyway, that, that was my statement, which is, only received slight revisions uh, as we progressed a little further into the 21st century. For my part, I will let my work demonstrate my artistic vision and passions. The pieces I am about to show you will, hopefully, speak for themselves. They will be presented in roughly chronological order, dating back to 1974, my earliest works following my graduate studies and master's degree. I will provide the titles of each piece and minimal commentary. I hope I got the right court. <laughs> um,
Let's try the other chord, because there's it's two chords. Oh, okay. Something's happening. All right. Well, I'm going to mess around here. Uh, I may have to shout for help again, but I think I got it now. Okay, so. <laughs> you have to see my screen here. Uh, let's go to this guy. Is that right? Uh, okay, this guy. And the crease interview. And. All right. Okay. Uh, the, the first. The first piece is called Stopping the Godless Aggressors. It's from 1974. Uh, this is a detail. Uh, this is toward the end of the Vietnam War when we were uh, coming out of Vietnam. Uh, this piece is called And They Shall Beat Their Swords into Plowshares. Also, 1974. It was my optimistic view on, on hopefully the end of a horrible war and uh, a future of peace. And the very top of the piece. My work is very small scale. I believe that there's power uh, in small things. Uh, so this is a little porcelain skull I made uh, for the uh, Endangered Species Series. So the skull is made in America, by the way. Yeah. Ruler in Japan. <laughs> and, uh, this is the piece it went into. It's called Endangered Species Number Two. It's Endangered Species Number Three. I was very interested in Netscape carvings uh, and very inspired by them. This piece is called Evil. <coughs> Demons of the intellect, professing to be wise, they became fools. <laughs> Universal hostage crisis, day 13,149. Uh, this piece was done in 1981 and it commemorated uh, the uh, years uh, since the bombing of the Russia. He's called, you never know where you're going till you get there. Uh, this is a, from a whole series of teapots that I began in 1979. This is the pyramidal skull teapot and four cube skull tea, uh, cups. Um, hexagonal curbside teapot. These were all inspired by Yixin teapots. I think you uh, may know of the uh, small stoneware teapots from Yixing, China, where the teapot originated. From the nuclear cooling tower series, this is a cooling tower teapot. <laughs> uh, my activism in the art uh, is anti-war, anti-nuclear, both power and weaponry. Pyramidal Skull Teapot, Military Intelligence. Uh, one of the variations of the Cube Skull Teapot. <coughs> and another variation of the Cube Skull Teapot. <coughs> Nuclear Nuts Teapot. Oops, this one disappeared. This one was called Ethnic Cleansing. But it's gone. <laughs> Let's see if the next one comes up. This is hard teapot, ironclad. Hard teapot, Beirut. Uh, these are all functional teapots, by the way. Uh, this 
is Arti Pot Salvador. There are other titles uh, like Afghanistan, Penang Han, Da Nang, Tegucigalpa. Uh, this one is New World Order. <laughs> You know, McGay, but for some reason it didn't come up. This is Mace. Hostage Metamorphosis. Petrol hostage. <clears throat> Internal combustion. The offering. In 1999, I began an installation project, um, and it was called Passages. This is the Passages, Passages installation, which includes a mural on the back wall, The Gift, and a piece called Legacy, a pile of over 2,000 stoneware ears. These are ears that don't hear, that don't heed the lessons of history. This is the mural called The Gift. And uh, it's seven feet by seven feet high by ten feet wide, and it consists of a number of uh, a sawdust fire tiles, relief tiles. When you get close, there are many images that relate back to the the whole. <coughs> uh, a series of teapots I call 20th century solutions teapots. This is called It Will Be the Same, and the titles are after Goya <coughs> from his disaster war etchings. This was. Nobody knows why. And these are teapots. Uh, not dishwasher safe, though. <laughs> With or without reason. Um, I, I do something that's akin to printmaking uh, with tiles. I do these in editions of 10. This is called This Is What You Were Born For. This one is a sleep of reason. For some reason, some of these are not coming up. Uh, but here's a couple of details of the sleep of reason. This is uh, the first three tiles. The center tile is a mushroom cloud. And then oh, the last three tiles. I don't know why. Sorry. This is T set Iraq 2007, and it includes things like a collateral damage, a WMD product of USA, etc. This was called All Nations Have Their Moment of Foolishness. <laughs> so it's about all of us, all of Americans, not just this one personality. And some of the details, some of the title details. So do some printmaking. I did a series of etchings, and I have done some uh, oil-based woodblock prints, but I'll show you some of the etchings. This is called The Gift, and the etchings really uh, echo the work that I do in clay. Again, all nations have their moment of foolishness. WMD, product of USA. is called Porque, and uh, has the, uh, it's called the Gemaku Doma, there's the uh, fourth image. This is 
it is no use shouting. And uh, this is the uh, mural I did based on that etching, also called It Is No Use Shouting. <coughs> detail of that mural. The tiles are fired in sawdust to get different colorations and then they're arranged afterwards to form the image. Another detail. This is called Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Hard rain. Sound and fury. You shall know them by their fruits. Endless irony of it all. Echoes of a million unheard screams. The last syllable of recorded time. series I began last year. This is called Nuts. And it's based on uh, Chinese hill jars from the uh, Han Dynasty. This one's called The Consent of Silence. And the detail. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. How many times? Uh, Bob Dylan's uh, Blowing in the Wind, it's a line from that. And it was kind of an anthem of my generation, a uh, detail of how many times. Another hard brain. And the detail. So I mentioned, you know, that we have to uh, really be active. We have to be alert, aware, and active. Uh, if not for ourselves, uh, certainly for our children and grandchildren. And oh, you know, my favorite slide didn't come up. It's my granddaughter, Eva, and me in an art museum. I'd love to end on it, but, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was 14. I was born shortly after World War II, and I was 14 when the Cuban Missile Crisis hit. And uh, we lived in Chicago, very near downtown on the south side. And uh, I begged my father to put a fallout shelter in the backyard. And my father and I said, Dad, why can't we put a fallout shelter in the backyard? And again, in that Jewish tradition of answering a question with a question, my father said, and we would come out to what? <laughs> he said, better to go in the first class. But ever since then, uh, I have been very much an anti-nuclear, anti-war activist, and I've got a few minutes left, so I didn't plan on doing this, but I did write a, uh, a poem last week. Uh, it was shortly after, uh, 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 you know, uh, 
Trump, I will call him president, um, mentioned, uh, made that horrible statement about North Korea. And the poem is titled, Good Morning, Mr. Trump. They will be met with fire and fury, and frankly, power, the likes of which the world has never seen before. Yes, go tell that to the few remaining survivors of Hiroshima, of Nagasaki. Or better yet, go there yourself. Sit down for tea with the Hibakusha. Take off that silly red hat and leave your golf cart behind. Stroll through the museums, walk through the parks, take in the monuments and artworks that memorialize those faithful moments in August 1945. Stay a day or two longer than the usual 15 minute photo op and write something not about yourself and your new friends in the guest book. So, Anyway, uh, you know, I think, I think there are many ways that we can reach out as artists and express ourselves. And, um, you know, I, I'll just finish with one more little anecdote. Um, I, I uh, do quite a few workshops and lectures at a lot of universities. And uh, about 15 years ago, I was at the University of Oregon in Eugene. And at the end of my uh, talk on my work, one of the students said, well, Mr. Natkin, what would you do if universal peace broke out and the last nuclear weapon on Earth was destroyed? You know, I've had a lot of questions, but never that one. That's like, this time I had to think. I, I thought for oh, maybe 10 seconds and a light bulb went out of my head. I just looked down at it and I said, nudes, lots of nudes. <laughs> so, so uh, on that note, uh, let's get that piece going. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you slept very well. you ready for today. And of course, beginning of this uh, keynote speakers. And I don't know if you're really surprised when you look at the names and who are those people? <laughs> Nothing to do with the Mokuhanga. And the Keiko, and we discuss about quite often about this and what we're going to do this. When are we. <clears throat> Okay, we're going to do this. So, Cisco, you do whatever you want to shape this conference. And then, greater deed we can do through the artists of Mokohanga, the beauty of Mokohanga. And we can do better, bigger mission we can conquer and make it our global community better, how we can do it. I need, we need to have speaker that speaks their life mission and their way of sharing their knowledge and the arts that it really means something to not only themselves but all of us. So, and it wasn't very uh, hard thing to think about it. And then so, when, okay, well we can do to do this in Hawaii. And it's, we got to, heal ourselves. And about three years ago, wasn't shape at all. Two years late, two years ago, and I started thinking more clearly about this, and got, you know, world becoming darker and darker, and it's, I only know these people can really speak for our heart. So, Miami, could you do this? Richard, can you do this for us? You know, they are artists, but they're greater. And both are, are very old, not old, long time <laughs> friends and practice the way we want to make the difference as an artist or, or the creator in the society 
in a global community that without power, what you can make a difference. So that's what we are trying to do here. And then welcome you for to become one of all of us that is, have the same heart and mission. Again, do something together. So for Hawaii, we say, it's, you know, bridge building is a very important because of the island middle of nowhere, you know? And we don't have much resources. We welcome you and your knowledge, your practice, whatever you do, come here to share it. And take something home to do the same goodness to your place. The global community become much closer and tighter. And more visible is a culture and arts rich world that we don't need to pick up weapons, we can pick up tools. You know, the, the farming tools or whatever the tools that makes us better human, better species on this planet. That's why I wanted to see it, we wanted to see it. And you get the mission and then the idea and to work on it. And tomorrow's speakers, of course, we have it here. Our former ambassador, Mr. Kondo, and I just fell in love with his speeches and uh, how he does things for not only Japan, but he really delivers so many wonderful things to the people to get idea and encourage them, young people, old people, to do the good things for the, not only Japan, but across the global community. So you're looking for another keynote speaker for tomorrow. But today, for after this, we, we have a two paper pre presentation going side by side. And also uh, the art building demonstration one at a time, but also happening at the same time. So you have to pick and choose where to go. I'm so sorry that you might miss some and you have to figure with the friends or whoever exchanging the notes and stuff like that. And make a friends, make a bridge, and make a program, your project going among yourself. And then so that we can really connect it. And before going home, take up lots of lots of good things home and that is a gift from the IMC 2017 Hawaii local community uh, committee. Okay, so the uh, paper um, presentation will be the third floor, next floor, uh, Pacific Room, and then this is the first floor. Downstairs, a koi room is a bigger room. So the, uh, the second, uh, third floor Pacific room is a 60-some uh, um, conference seating already arranged. So it's a limited. So you, if you want to go there, you just go there. Don't fight. But peacefully, yeah, engage, and then share, and then check with the friends, and then check exchange note. Okay, so starting from here, you go upstairs the third floor for that one Pacific room in the central area, one of the Asian and Pacific, back to back. <clears throat> and the COVID room is downstairs in a bigger space. And then you have to cross the, uh, the lawn here and to the, again, uh, the building, um, art building and to Manoa for the demonstration floor of the Gallery. If you need information, anything, um, somebody in the uh, uh, Commons Gallery, so we can assist you on that. Okay, so any question, just come to me or anybody here. Your phone? Is this yours? Your friend was on the left. So you, you have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Thank you so much.